Now I would like to recognize Mr. Moore from Kansas for the purpose of introducing his constituent, Ms. Farris. There we go. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for the invitation to be here today, I'm Dennis Moore from 3rd District of Kansas and as a member of the Small Business Committee who's been on leave from the committee since the beginning of 2001, it's great to be back here in the hearing room. I'm here today to introduce my constituent and your next panelist, Denise Ferris. Denise is the founder and managing partner of the Ferris Law Firm, where she practices general business and commercial construction law. She was AV rated by Martindale Hubble, representing the highest peer review ratings for expertise and ethics. Her firm provides legal services related to corporate consultation and formation with special emphasis on women and minority-owned small business, including federal contracts and affirmative action along with risk management and general contract litigation. Denise is a rising star in Kansas City and its surrounding areas with her law practice and experience as a small business owner. During 2007 alone, she was named Woman in Public Policy's Instant Impact Team Leader and awarded their 2007 National Public Policy Award. Kansas City Business Magazine named her among the 50 most influential business women in the Kansas City chapter of the National Association of Women Business Owners named her Member of the Year. She's rated uh, by the Missouri Bar top 25 presenters. Denise is a frequent speaker and author for various local, regional, and national trade organizations and magazines. She's authored chapters on affirmative action. And uh, Denise has also been a featured presenter for the National Forum of the Construction Industry Annual Meeting, the Association of General Contractors, Bu Builders Associations of Kansas City and Springfield. My staff has another 14 pages of introduction. I'm going to stop right there and, and welcome Denise Ferris. Smith. Ms. Ferris, you will be recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair Velasquez, Ranking Member Shabbat, members of the committee, and Congressman Moore. Thank you for coming by. My name is Denise Ferris, and I'm appearing today on behalf of WIP Women Impacting Public Policy and its general membership, which represent over a half a million women business owners nationwide. I own the Ferris Law Firm in Stillwell, Kansas, which sits on the border of Kansas and Missouri. I am a certified WBE company, and I am apparently one of the 55,000 women currently registered in the CCR. I'm a commercial construction lawyer, and for the past 17 years, I've focused on the constitutional parameters of affirmative action in government contracting. I know the committee appreciates how important this proposed rule is to us and to me personally and professionally. I focus my comments today on three aspects of the rule. First, the RAND study, the legal standard applied, and then the flowdown effect. The 2000 law gave the SBA the responsibility to determine in which industries women-owned businesses were underrepresented. The RAND Corporation released its study in 2007 after seven long years of waiting. As discussed earlier in this hearing, the RAND Corporation, per SBA direction, computed disparity ratios for women-owned businesses in four different categories. The RAND study concluded that depending on how the SBA chose to interpret the data, either 80 percent on the one hand or zero percent on the other hand of industries showed a significant disparity for women-owned businesses. We believe this indicates some fundamental flaws in the data on which the proposed rule is based, and the RAND study actually admits the own errors in the data. It identifies inaccurate NAICS codes, does not analyze the huge disparity variance in the methods, relies on outdated size standards, it omits important data such as the entire Department of Defense procurement stats, and it also ignores the effect of multi-year schedule contracts and classifications. In light of these deficiencies, the SBA nonetheless chose the method least supportive of the original legislative intent. Second, we believe the SBA proposed rule applies an incorrect standard of review. Although it says it's applying intermediate scrutiny, it clearly, in fact, has created a new level which goes beyond even strict scrutiny and a level that doesn't currently exist for any other program. For example, under intermediate scrutiny, a government only has to show an important state interest or government interest and a program substantially related to achievement of that interest. This standard has already been met, specifically as acknowledged in Public Law 106.554 and the RAND study and the preface to the current Federal Register rule. The government has acknowledged, one, that women-owned businesses are the fastest-growing segment of our economy. 
Number two, that we're growing at twice the rate of the average business in the economy. And three, that despite this fact, since 1994, we have not been able to hit a 5% target in federal procurement. But here the SBA is actually saying we, knew it, we need a new strict, strict scrutiny standard because we're saying first, despite the law, the program can't be implemented until we've done this seven-year study. And secondly, even after this study has found underrepresentation, we're now requiring a new level that requires each agency to do an additional study before the rule is implemented, and that's the key fact. For example, the 2007 study determined that if you are a woman cabinet maker, you are substantially underrepresented. But before you can justify a set-aside, each agency then has to review its discriminatory cabinet-making contracting practices before they can justify the set-aside. Now, we all know that government moves deliberately and slowly, but quite frankly, under this standard, any contracting opportunity will be gone once these study after study is done. <coughs> Finally, and importantly, this rule has a chilling effect on state and local programs because of this new standard, which effectively kills all gender-related programs. True availability cannot be measured until women business owners are encouraged to register their businesses and their capabilities. The message flows down to women-owned businesses that there is no reason to register because effectively no program will ever survive this standard. We urge the committee to send the SBA back to the drawing board and to investigate why only 55,000 women-owned businesses out of a pool of 10.4 million are currently registered in the CCR. Since it's taken the SBA seven years to get this far, we believe the agency should thoughtfully consider the public comments it receives during the next 60 days. WIP encourages Congress to require the SBA to implement a meaningful women's procurement program, which will actually have a positive effect on women-owned businesses in federal procurement. Thank you.